Hey everybody, my name is Jen and I'm a woman in long-term recovery. I'm also a CARC, a SERPA, a rape crisis counselor, and a Narcan trainer. Uh, if you hear some stuff in the background, all the cats and the dog are in here with me, so please be mindful that they are just babies. Um, if you look at my description box down below, you will find the link to all my social media, my Patreon, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Instagram for supplies for life as well. And uh, uh, you will find a link to the documentary Smacks that I was in when I was newly in my pathway to recovery. I was actually in county jail when this happened. Sit. Thank you. You will also find a link to a video that I did that describes all my certifications that I just mentioned. So also, as always, Amazon Go Bags wish list is up and harm reduction wish list is available upon request. So please, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Today I'm gonna do um, a story time, a prison story time with you guys. So I actually forgot about this one until Jess and I were just on the phone and uh, I was telling her about it and she was like, bitch, you need, to, you, you need to go record that. That's funny as fuck. So here we are. So this happened in 2007 while I was in Albion Correctional Facility. And uh, you know, you make like your group of friends that you become friends with and you get officers who like you and officers who don't like other people and it becomes very obvious who likes who, who doesn't like who, who gets along with who, who doesn't get along with who. So I am there and I um, must have just gotten a package or something and there was a girl that I was very friendly with that we used to eat together, hang out together, play cards together, smoke together, go to the yard together, like that. she was one of my people. She asked me if she could have something out of my locker and I was like, no, no. I don't even know why I said no to her. I was just like, no. And she went and took it anyway. And it was like legit like a couple of fucking starbursts, okay? So the way that Albion dorms are set up, it's a huge room. And then there's walls that are like cubicle walls or like bathroom stall walls almost like that's the same material and they're made into cubicles now some people have single cubes some people have double bunk cubes where there's bunk beds in them you it went getting a single cube went along according to seniority so there's like four sections there's like the front the back then there's a middle corridor with nothing in it where people walked up and down to get to get out of the building and then you know there's the ones on the other side so there's like a left and a right side we were both if you were looking out we were both on the left back side she was in the corner closest to the main corridor and i was a few in so her and i were catty corner so i'm in a double bunk and she's in a single cube we're arguing she's standing at like she's leaning on her cube wall like her doorway for cube wall and her and i are bickering back and forth right and all of a sudden this officer he walks in and he sees us arguing so he walks over i mean and like we're like we're not like arguing like we're getting ready to throw down like we're, we're bickering we're bickering like she's my friend we're bickering and he walks over to her and he was like you fucking yelling at her and, and I don't even think she knew what was going on because neither did I. I was like, what? Mind you, this is like my first three, four months in prison, okay? Ever, ever. I'm a baby still. So um, she's like, she doesn't, I don't even think she says anything because we're both so taken back by his, like, how upset and how mad he is and how much he's yelling. So she has her hands in her pockets, right? Because state pants have pockets. So she has her hands in her pockets. And he's like, why do you got your fucking hands in your pockets for? And she still has like, she was like, uh, because I'm, I am I don't know what to do with my hands. And he's like, what are you going to fucking shank me? What are you going to shank me? And she's like, uh, uh. And he fucking, he's like, turn around. And so she goes to like, turn around. Now at this point, the poor girl probably doesn't know whether to take her hands out of her pockets, leave them in there, shit or go blind. Like she doesn't know what to do. Like the entire dorm, you could hear a pin drop. We were all like. And I'm like, oh my God, like this is my friend, bro. So he fucking shoves her up against the fucking cube wall, like face plants her in the cube wall, whips her hands out of her pockets, puts them behind her, cuffs her up, fucking takes her out by the ankle. So she face plants into the floor. She's down on the floor. We're all like, like, is this real life? Like, is this really happening? This is the first sign of violence that I've ever seen inside prison, especially from an officer. Like, I don't even know what, like, I, I'm, I'm, speechless 
fucking yokes her up by the back of the fucking cops, picks her up and takes her to lock. And I'm like, he's like, she won't bother you anymore, ma'am. And I'm like, she wasn't bothering me. Like, I was being a bitch. Like, she wanted some fucking food and I was PMSing and, like, didn't want to share my starburst. Like, it was so incredibly chaotic. Like, it was nutty. Like, I couldn't believe that this was happening. So, now... As I was saying earlier, in order to get a single cube, it goes according to seniority. I was up next for the single cube. Sit down. So since I was up next for the single cube, what do you fucking think happened? Yeah. So a day goes by, like they come, the officers come, she's in lock, officers come, pack up all her belongings. We find out, like, we're like, where, where did she just get moved to a different unit? They're like, no, she's, she's in lock. She's probably going to do 30 days disrespecting an officer. Mind you, homegirl didn't say a fucking word. Like in her defense, she didn't say a fucking word. She was so scared and speechless and stunned that this was happening. We all were, we were all like, like crazy. So he packs up all her shit, this other officer, takes it to her stuff. Two days later goes by, all of a sudden, I get called up to the front desk. They're like, you know, by my maiden name, they were like, come up here. But I go up to the desk, they're like, pack your stuff up. And I'm like, oh, okay, where am I going? They're like, cube so-and-so. And I'm like, how fucked up is that? Not only did me being a bitch and bickering back and forth get my friend in trouble over some goddamn fruit or fucking starburst rather because I didn't want to let her have some because I was uh, you know I was pissed off she went in my locker and took it after I told her no but at the end of the day I used to send her in my locker all the time to go get shits when we were cooking snacks whatever I was just being a fucking bitch I was PMSing I didn't want to share I didn't have that much stuff whatever and it just totally got taken out of context and then this poor girl goes to fucking lock mind you it's the summer so it's hot as balls in lock okay and I get moved into her single cube how crazy is that? So not only did my poor friend get kicked out of the fucking unit, went to lock over nothing, like nothing, and then I got her fucking single cube. Like, poor thing. Like, 30 days later, she comes out of lock. She doesn't even want to look at me, which I, I can't blame her. I mean, we patched things up, and I still talk to her to this day. But, like, it was absolutely ludicrous. <clears throat> and I remember saying, like, the, that morning that they told me to move, like, I said to one of my friends, Angie, I'm like, what do I do? Like, what do I do? I, I don't know what to do. She was like, bitch, you move. That's what you do. You pack your shit and you fucking move or you'll be going to the place too. And I was like, but that's so wrong. She was like, welcome to prison. When they tell you to move, you move. When they tell you to don't move, you don't move. They're telling you to move, bitch, move. So, I packed my shit and I moved into her cube. It was just... The scumbaggery of it was just absurd and I felt absolutely horrible and I could not believe like I that was my first real taste of prison politics. That is when I really learned how things go down in prison and for some reason this officer took a shining to me and we would always chit chat and he was always very nice to me and I was very young and very naive and didn't understand how prison really worked. Like I said, I had only been there for a few short months. And <laughs> I, I, I learned that day, that was for sure. I was no longer, you know, a new fish. I learned how to jail that day. That was part of my jailing education, we shall say. And these are, this is, this is literally, that is a prime example of how, how jail works, how prisons work. And I moved immediately because I was told to. I was scared. I did not want to go to lock two. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this lighthearted because this one was lighthearted for all you say mine aren't lighthearted. I hope you guys enjoyed this lighthearted prison story and you know remember we recover loudly so those behind us do not suffer in silence. Bye guys.